What's up? It's Pandar here in the, in the studio or in the in the listening lounge with a very special guest. I like I'm kind of like looking pretty stoked that you're here, Mr. Blanco Brown. Welcome. What it do, man? I'm glad to be here. Is this your first time in San Diego? Nope. Ah! Nope. I came about uh two months ago. Did you like it? I loved it. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. I like low key. You know, I've this is not my this is not my first rodeo of doing interviews, but like I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty stoked to be interviewing you right now just because like your song is so fire. Just three weeks ago, just discovering it on the internet, and then like now you're here. I want to know the first time. You know, I saw I saw the Instagram video, which is pretty epic, and I love asking this question. The first time you heard your single on the radio, tell me all about it. Oh man, it was like. You know, I haven't really thought about you asking that question, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was a moment where it felt magical. Something you worked for your whole life, and then you finally see it and hear it on the radio. I mean, it's like the epitome. You know what I'm saying? It's like, boom. That's me. It was it was amazing. Did you tell it your parents too? Like, oh, that's, that's me right there. Oh, yeah. I took a video, then I sent it to my mom and my daddy, and I was just like, we on the radio. Bless your heart. I love <laughs> I love that. Now, I know this is a very generic, generic, basic radio DJ question, but you know, it's a, it's a question I always like to ask, all right, how did it come together, especially with someone who has like, just, I like to say, multiple tastes in genre. How did it come together? How did the dance come together? How did it all come together to where we are now, where you're now like one of the biggest names in music? <clears throat> you just put a lot on that right there. But, <laughs> but, but uh, I started with the lap steel, then I added the drums. Um, the kick, the snare, and beatboxing, spoons, tambourine. And it was the first time I had ever played the lap steel. I forgot to mention that. Wow. Like, I'm not a lap steel player. But, uh, but I you found, did it. I found like a dope loop. I tuned it like my guitar, open E. Um, and as I got finished making the track, I just felt like the record needed, you know, something that was joyful to complement it. And now uh, I started thinking about and reminiscing on like dance steps I seen growing up and line dancing. I was just like, this right here could be the new Achy Break It Heart or something. Like it's just Man. it got that much joy. It it's just it's just an uplifting song. You know what I'm saying? When you heard Don't Break My You couldn't do nothing but get up and have fun. He just don't break it, understand? And if you break <laughs> my heart. Wow, well, that's a good, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot it. Wow. Damn, you're, you're musically in tune. And then uh, the, my favorite part my favorite part of the get up is the ooh, 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 ooh. That just makes it make ooh, ooh. Yep. There you go. Now, yep. you, you got a lot of musical influences. A lot of musical influences. Johnny Cash, especially from, from what I researched. If there's one Johnny Cash that song that you like listening to, just like, what would that be? I know that's like a tough question. There's a lot of them. But if there's one that's like, wow. Oh, that's my go-to. I mean, my favorite to listen to is uh, Walk the Line. But wow. I love a boy named Sue and um, Ring of Fire and, I mean, so many of his records. That's, that's true. Now, getting to know Mr. Mr. Blanco, what's something that you, uh, you as a person, instead of from artists, like to do on your free time? That's something that, you know, when, when, I get, when music is aside, what do you like to do when, you know, you're chilling? I used to like working on cars, but my hands get too dirty. <laughs> so um, I like drawing and doing like art. Wow. I went to school for art and got a bachelor's of fine arts and I- um, Can you sketch anime? Yeah, I could do it all, like any medium. So you can draw a pretty good, like, you know, Goku Super Saiyan 3 is legit. Yeah, cartoon characters. I can make you into Goku. Wow. That's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry, that's the first time someone's kind of left me low-key speechless. <laughs> <laughs> usually, we usually have artists that be like, yeah, you know, drawing's cool. They're like, oh yeah, I draw. And they're like, yeah, I paint, I make a flower. But you see Goku and all that, that's what's up. <laughs> You're a very talented individual. Oh yeah. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> will Goku kill for Cheetah? Or will Krillin take over Planet Nebula? <laughs> ah! I'm, I'm, ah! <laughs> Now, you're sp now I, what about your Spongebob game? Is just, can you oh, draw man. a Spongebob? Yeah, definitely. Oh, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> now, aside from your single, 
What other, right, what other music that you're working on that you can give us a little Costco sample on that's like, you know, we should be on the lookout for? I know the single, The Get Up Is Hot right now. What should we expect next? Oh, uh, man, I have an EP out, self-titled Blanco Brown. It got four bangers on there, like undeniable, great music, country elements, uh, trap elements, all messed up into one, trailer trap. Trailer trap. I like that. And then when I when I when I first discovered your song on the internet, like there there's somehow I don't know whether you guys predicted the future or not, but there, the today's like millennial and like generation, it's like Gen Z I believe they're listening to trap and country. Like, did you guys did you guys like predict the future or like did you see the trend happening or did you like hey these are two really good genres that I'm just gonna fuse together? I mean, when you listen to country music nowadays, it's implementing a lot of. Uh, the trap elements or talking about songs with that's not country. Um, I done heard Dr. Dre in a song, uh, a country song. When I listen to Sam Hunt, when I listen to um, a few of the artists, I mean like everything is one big pot of greatness right now. It's not just one sound. You can start and you can talk about the most country things in the world, but if the elements aren't there, then it's not country. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the heart got to be there. Country music is about implementing those feelings and being true to something. And with country, you can't go left or right. You got to be committed to the essence of it. Ah. The essence of my music starts with country elements and the writing is country driven. And then I just put drums on it, cause you know I'm from the hood. Make you make the gish di ding, mashallah. Yeah. I like that. That's you you got to. What you just say though? Uh, that was the gish It's like you know, make it dancey. I want to hear it again, sorry. Gish di ding, mashallah. We'll get to that. That's 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 the that's the that's the that's the grand 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 finale. That's dope. Now, 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 of moving along, just like you know, I'm, I, we're all almost done, and I love like just, I, I, I expected to not, not this type of dope interview. So this is uh, amazing. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I like to say that you know you discovered you discovered the thing that most kids are doing right now, which don't mean to knock radio or anything, but uh, but uh, where 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 the music industry sometimes is falling behind, where kids are listening to multiple genres. There's no there's no more. There's no more being put in a box. Like I like I tell EDM uh, listen, EDM DJs now, it's not, not not making EDM. It's just making M music. You're making M. <laughs> yes, M, I like that. Music. And if there's any advice you could give to you know to young artists, producers who are kind of now you know following your footsteps of putting genres together, but might feel kind of like oh I feel like I need to go a certain lane. How do you convince them to just stay in that lane of mixing things together like what people are doing now? Oh man, be limitless. Uh be driven, uh, motivate yourself because people ain't gonna always motivate you. And don't stop doing what you're doing. People told me eight years ago, I wouldn't be able to do this music and that it wouldn't be accepted. And I just had another aspect and I mean another, you know, another mindset about it. And I just felt like if I kept on being true to what I loved and what I wanted to do, one day I can bring it all together. And in around 2011, 2012, I added an, another part of myself to it. And I can be myself. Be yourself. Don't, like, take no shortcuts from nobody. Stay true to yourself. Everything is possible. Positivity and joy over everything in the world. Just be positive, be joyful, and get it done. Be So even if you're weird like me, be yourself. Be yourself. I like that. Now, social Word is good. Man, said all the right things today. <laughs> I, I, I like that. Now, social media. Where can people find you on? Like, I know even though your 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 IG is pretty much blowing up and all, for people that are like, "Wow, I really like this guy. He's amazing." Where can they find you? You can find me at Blanco Brown, B L A N C O B R O W N. And then make sure to put on his uh, on your story of the song and the lyrics. And that's like probably the coolest. That is the coolest trend right now to put the uh, put the get up on the, on their IG stories and have like the lyrics play out. It's probably one of the fun. I okay, I enjoy doing it too. It's, it's pretty refreshing. <laughs> Thank you much. So no, no worries. Blessings. Okay, now uh, la last question before we get into the you know the grand finale. Anything else that people should know about you, your show, especially your shows? What can people expect at a Blanco show? Oh, full of energy. I love to perform and, you know, get the crowd's reaction. Uh, 
to me it's all about what people, you know, accept my music as and how they feel about it when I'm done. I used to drive, I would ride in Lyft uh, like for years just to, play, just to play my records and see which ones they love the most. And then I chose those records to go on my album. That's actually, that's, that's pretty, wow. I do that. I do that with Uber too. I make sure if the I'm like I I low key be like yo. So who's that uh, Pandar guy? That's like <laughs> he's, he's good, right? And sometimes they go no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, when I'm performing, it's all about the audience and my supporters and my you know my fans. But I like to throw an R in there, call them my friends. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I like that. Now. For the grand finale, the gish did di ding mashallah. So I was like, okay, I need to tea, I need to toss in a little Persian flavor into this, and you can use it however you like. So when we go through so the uh, Persian dances, you go like this. Imagine two light bulbs, like you're screwing them on, and you go gish did di ding mashallah. And mashallah means like very nice. Gish did di ding mashallah. Gish did di ding mashallah. So pull, put your three hands out like this. Gish did di ding mashallah. Okay. I'm finna do it now. Yeah. Gish did it ding mashallah. 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 That's it. That's it. You're you're now you now got some Persian in you. You can you you can use that in your music now. I'm trying to tell you. And there you go, Blanc. Thank you, sir. Thank you much. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Blessings. And very nice. Super Saiyan level three. Ah.